In this lab, we are going to learn how to use PowerShell to deploy a CloudFormation template. This constructs the fundamental to integrate any build system with CloudFormation. Most of the build systems like Azure DevOps Services, uh, Jenkins, TeamCity, they all support uh, either command line or PowerShell or both. So you can use the methods that I'm going to explain in this lab series to integrate easily with your CI CD systems. So let's first try to understand how to deploy AWS CloudFormation with the help of PowerShell. I'm in my development machine. If you go into C Dev folder, all the projects that we are going to explore in this lab series are given here. And if you go into my cat application and copy that folder part, and then open Visual Studio Code, and then open that folder, select the folder, you will find that there are a couple of files available for you in this project. To explore the files, you need to select this tab Explore, and that's where you will find all the files under this folder. So the script that we are going to deploy is called Deploy PS1. This is a PowerShell script. All what it does is uh, get the name of the stack, uh, locate the uh, CloudFormation template available. In this case, it's the network template. Execute few PowerShell commands to test whether the CloudFormation template is a valid one. If it is a valid one, it's going to check whether there are CloudFormation execution with the same stack name. If you already have the same stack name, it's going to uh, update the stack. If it is a new stack, or if that stack name does not exist, it's going to create a new stack. A few PowerShell commands uh, that it's going to execute, and these PowerShell commands came as part of AWS, uh, AWS tools for PowerShell. So if you try to execute this uh, PowerShell command, the way to execute that one, you can do it from uh, Visual Studio Code itself. Go to debug and then start debugging. You will find that it's going to throw a security exception, saying that it doesn't have permissions to execute this. The reason for this is that this PowerShell script does not have permissions to execute uh, these commands like uh, test CFN template, get CFN stack. So these are all cloud formation related uh, commands. And when it tries to reach to AWS API, it fails. Here, I don't specify any profile name or I don't give any access key or secret keys. But it tries to access, uh, because it fails to access uh, access key or secret key, either through my profile or either through session, it finally fall back into access uh, the credentials through the instance profile given to this uh, EC2 instance. And that's why you get this error. Uh, DevOps Dev Machine role is not authorized to perform these actions. If you are not familiarized with how permission works in PowerShell, make sure that you go through the previous labs that explain uh, how to provide credentials for PowerShell uh, commands execution. So what we are going to do here is to uh, attach a permission for this EC2 instance so that these PowerShell commands will automatically get permissions to execute against AWS APIs. I'm in my AWS console. If you go into to Identity and Access Management, or IAM, and then go into Policies, and then select Policies based on these Customer Manage Policies, you will find a policy called My Cat App Policy. So this is a fine-grained policy that I have defined. And as part of this uh, policy, if you go into uh, the permissions, you can view uh, the policy summary here if you want, or if you want to get it um, as one JSON document, you can uh, click this button. And then you can find that it provides uh, certain permissions to execute certain uh, CloudFormation uh, API endpoints. It also allows uh, create, delete, update stacks as long as the name of the CloudFormation stack is cat home. And also it allows certain uh, EC2 related commands. 
if you go into your CloudFormation template that this PowerShell script try to execute, the script location is given in network template, which is this one. You can find that, uh, if we expose this, you can find that it's trying to create a VPC. So you need to have permissions to create a VPC. It's also trying to create a tag for this VPC so that it can identify the VPC with the name of the stack. It's also going to create subnet, so you need to have permissions to create subnet. It's going to select an AZ, so it needs to have uh, permissions to access uh, describe availability zones commands. So to execute these commands, what will happen is when the CloudFormation template is running, it needs to invoke certain API endpoints. To invoke those API endpoints, it needs permissions. So those permissions are given in this IAM policy. So it's a fine grained one. Uh, as a DevOps engineer, uh, one of your job is to give just enough permissions to the task in hand. So usually you don't give like, for example, CloudFormation hash asterisk to give all the permissions. You give just enough permissions, so you will spend a lot of time creating these fine grained policies. So I have my CatTap policy. The next step is, of course, to attach this into EC2 instance. So the EC2 instance, I'm running this command. If you go to EC2 section, is the dew machine. So this is the dew machine that I'm running these uh, PowerShell uh, commands. So if you go into the IAM role, it says DevOps dew machine role. So this is the same role that the PowerShell execution complaints does not have enough permissions. So if you go into your uh, PowerShell previous execution, you can find that it explains, uh, it gives an error saying that a DevOps due machine is not authorized to perform certain actions. So what I'm going to do is to attach these custom permissions into this uh, IAM role. So open it in a new tab. That will take you to this DevOps due machine role. So as of now, it has uh, two permissions. So one of these one came as part of a previous lab execution. So let's attach a policy. I'm going to attach this customer manage policy. In this lab environment, uh, you are going to use this policy that I have already defined because you do not have permissions to create new policies. But if you have enough permissions in your, for example, in your personal uh, uh, AWS account, you can go to policies and then create your own uh, custom policies. So in this case, I'm just attaching an existing uh, custom uh, customized policy called my cat app policy. So I attach that. So ideally my EC2 instance now should have permissions to execute the commands I want. So let's try to execute the PowerShell command again. Go back into my console. We don't need this. Select the PowerShell uh, script that I want to execute. Uh, let's, for the moment, let's clear this window. So we have a clean slate here. Um, and now we run the PowerShell command again. Start debugging. So in this case, read in the template, test income template, and now it's successful. If you go into uh, your AWS console, uh, select CloudFormation, you can find that the create in progress, because this is the first time that I'm running this uh, cat home. You can find this is creating certain resources. Uh, if you go into that you will find that it's provisioning certain resources. So it created a VPC, successful. Um, and it's creating some other more resources. So certain, uh, it's going to create, it already created the VPC and now it's in the process of creating subnets. So at some point in time, uh, this CloudFormation template uh, will be marked as create complete. And once it is done, you can go into, uh, for example, VPC and then see that there is a VPC created with the name of the stack, in this case, cat home. It got this name because if you look at the CloudFormation template that we provision, the name came from the stack name itself. You can, of course, define your own uh, custom name here. And if you go into the subnets and then type cat home, you can find there's one subnet provi uh, provision as part of this execution. How do you know this subnet came as part of this cloud formation? You can look at the tags, and the tag says the name of the stack, and the 
stack ID. Same for the VPC, which got provisioned as the uh, part of this CloudFormation execution. If you go to the tags, you can find uh, CloudFormation logical ID, stack ID that identifies which stack provision these resources. So if I go into my uh, PowerShell script, what got executed is this new stack. Now imagine at some point in time you want to add uh, another subnet. You can easily do that, of course. So if you go into the network template, so instead of having uh, one subnet, let's add another subnet. So this is subnet one. Let's add another subnet. So I'm copying it with this comma. Make sure that there's no any errors. I need to give it a different name, subnet two. Let's provision it to uh, another availability zone in this case. I'm getting the set of availability zones available using this function. And it's going to be another availability zone. Here I'm taking the first availability zone and this is second one. And I'm going to give it a different side block like number two. So I created this subnet and I'm going to save it, this template. Uh, I press Ctrl C. Uh, I save the template and I'm going to execute this uh, PowerShell command again. So let's execute it, start debugging. So it's now going to update this template. So if I go into the cloud formation, you can find that it's update in progress. If I click here, look at the resources, you can find it added a new subnet, create in progress. It did not change the previous subnets. It's only added a new one. So update is complete. If I go into VPC and then go into the subnet section, you will find that there are two subnets available on the cat home. So if you search cat home, there are two subnets and this is the new one that has been provisioned. So let's say you don't want this subnet that you provision. It's a best practice that every time when you add something through CloudFormation, you also remove things using the CloudFormation. So it's all about using uh, code as the method of doing any modification to the environment. So in that case, I'm going to remove this CloudFormation, uh, this subnet using the CloudFormation template itself. To do that, uh, I just go into my uh, template which is available here, network template. Uh, the subnet that I want to remove uh, is, let's say subnet two, I don't want this. Let's remove it. Make sure that you remove the correct uh, subnet and the brackets are correct. Save it. You can save the file, close it. And then let's deploy the file again. So start debugging, which will run this script. So if I go into my uh, CloudFormation uh, execution again, you can find again an update uh, progress is in progress. The events are getting fired. You can find that update in progress, update completed, delete in progress. So it's going to remove one subnet. So go to the stacks. So update completed. So if I go into my VPCs again, and then go into my subnets. You can find that if you search cat home, there's only one subnet available. And that's how you update the stacks and then remove the resources that you don't want. I'm back in my development machine. This PowerShell script, when it tries to execute this CloudFormation template, it used the stack name as cat home. And if you look at the permissions that we attached a moment ago, which is in this case, if you go into the IAM permissions uh, and the policies, um, and then select uh, the custom managed policies, my cat app policy. And this cat app policy says that you are allowed to create delete update stack only if the name of the stack is cat home. So this is what we attach to the EC2 instance. 
So if you try to run this with, let's say, a different uh, stack name, and then try to uh, run it, you will get an error saying that um, this role does not provide permissions to uh, run a CloudFormation stack with this name because it doesn't have the permissions to execute a, a CloudFormation stack with a name like cat home one So that's how you can define fine-grained IAM policies. There are a lot of uh, conditions that you can say. For example, you can say, hey, this is allow, this permission allows running um, the, uh, uh, this gives these permissions only during this time of the day. You can say, uh, you, can, you can be very creative in defining these IAM policies. Uh, this course is not a detailed uh, uh, um, training around uh, IAM policies. Uh, IAM policies are very advanced. You can define very customizable, very complex policies that allows you to give fine-grained control over AWS API endpoints. So we have done this lab uh, to learn how to uh, deploy a CloudFormation template using a PowerShell. Uh, the IAM policy uh, that I have uh, provisioned here as my CatTab policy is available for you to view if you want to have it um, uh, as an exploration. Uh, you can view it in sample policy. It's the same policy that I have created as my app policy, my CatTab policy. What I did was I copied this policy and created a new uh, policy in this uh, account called my cat tab policy um, as I said uh, you do not have permissions to create policies uh, but if you are going to create a policy uh, you can create a policy in your personal account uh, you just go to policies and then click create policy button uh, you can uh, paste uh, the JSON document um, that I have created here uh, copy it and you can paste this uh, policy and then click uh, review policy and then go next a few steps to create a, uh, your own custom policies.